Alrighty, guys, welcoming back to another program. We got our friends from Kubota here, Tom and Matt. Tom Vockel, uh, Senior Turf Product Manager for Kubota, working out of Grapevine, Texas. I'm Matt Sabaka, Turf Product Manager, working for the Southeast Division, based out of Suwannee, Georgia here. Okay, now, Mar- I thought you said Marietta. Here. Now, well, I live in oh, Marietta, I gotcha. but office is based out of Suwannee, so yes, yes, you Land- are right. Okay. Atlanta's a big, big area. <laughs> yeah, well, with traffic, I mean, on the map, it's like, oh, they're right next to each other, but with traffic, that's 45 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Not to scare you, we're going to get you to the airport on time. No. Uh- But we got a lot to talk about, guys, on today's program. And so I want to hear about some of your fleet programs. And Matt, if you could tell us more about what is a fleet of one. We're one of the few companies that can offer you a fleet, uh, you know, discount on on one unit. And there's actually more than one way to do it. There's two different options you can do it. Starting off, there's a thank you for your service program and also a starter fleet program. So we know a lot of people getting into this. I'm sure a lot of people that subscribe to your podcast are, you know, they may be a a firefighter, they may be a police officer, they have some downtime, they're looking for a side business. This kind of offers them that that discount, that opportunity to, to get into a mower at a good price, starting out with just basically ID with information, proving that they are you know, doing what they're doing. So what kind of identification or do they need to get started? Yeah. So if, I mean, if you're a retired veteran, you just show your car, we won't take any photocopies of that, but you know, just showing proof to the dealer that you are doing what you're doing. And then they kind of sign off on it to us proving that you are, and then the dealer will get the discount. The discount goes back to the customer. So, and again, same thing with, with uh, police officers, firefighters, just show that, that proof that, they're doing what they're doing. I don't know exactly what it may be. I don't know if it's a badge or, you know, an identification card, but, uh, usually the ID card, usually the ID card works uh, really well. And, and that is, that is a nice thing. You know, it helps, helps those people who help us all, Mm -hmm. if you will. Again, that's another one of the ways we like to give back to offer them that discount. And, uh, as he mentioned, you know, with the same, the, the similar, uh, cost breakout, if you will, or discounts, apply to the starter fleet type folks and the starter fleet type folks is again fairly simple as well Matt yeah, right yeah starter fleet I mean we know some of them may not have an established you know business license right out of the gate so we'll actually with a picture of a truck and trailer we'll we'll give them that fleet discount so that's the proof that they're in the business they're getting started so it's kind of how how we like to do that one so and, and one of the things we like to do about that is we know it's important and we know there's a big cost associated with your subscribers here and, and the listeners of these podcasts that you know we're looking for advantages mm-hmm. and these are some of the ways again that Kubota looks at is trying to help give that advantage back to, to the users to help grow our business uh, and as you buy more Kubota products you get deeper discounts okay. so so there's some other things that are out there even with current people who may not be using that product but those products will count towards your all your other Kubota products and things like that so it allows us to be very competitive uh, with many of the other manufacturers out there and we try to help them get to our dealership to to our group to learn about our products and use our products can you tell me a little bit more about the insurance comprehensive coverage Yes, so the KTAC insurance, Kubota insurance that we provide, it's it's a Kubota product. And the reason we're kind of bringing it up in this situation is, you know, it's it's something that not everyone knows about, but it's, you think when you buy a machine, your homeowner's policy will cover it if something happens. Uh, and this one takes it almost a little step further. You know, like I said earlier, this is a Kubota product where we are behind it 100%, but it covers your piece of equipment when it leaves the property. So when you're a contractor and you're out mowing, you know, if it, falls off the back of a trailer, you're in a wreck, you know, a $250 deductible gets that machine repaired or if needed, replaced. Um, and even in the case of, of, of theft, uh, and even accidental, you know, if something happens to it, it was funny. I was talking with our, our credit rep and he said, one of the highest uh, incidences is uh, zero turn mowers going into lakes, which I didn't realize yeah. was one, but they're popular footage on Instagram. If you want to go viral, <laughs> Take your mower into the lake, use there, a trending sound. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It'll so, go viral. So if, if you have that coverage on the machine, uh, you know, through KTAC, that's that's a, an accident that's covered under insurance with a $250 deductible. That's something that I just don't think I've seen out in the industry. Uh, so that's kind of a, a really good tool for, for a landscape guy to have. Yeah, Matt, we had a guest on the show, Paul, down in Miami, and uh, he had bought a new mower. It was on his uh, trailer. Oh, he had an open trailer. He had three employees. They were working in the backyard, and he was out at the store. 
And his employee called him and said, hey, Paul, he said, uh, where's the where's the truck and the mower? And he's like, what are you talking about? It, it's uh, out front. And they're like, no, it's not. And he's like, stop playing with me because he was at the store. Like, it's not there. Well, someone had come and stolen it. They just wired the car drove or truck, drove it off with the open trailer and the brand new mower. And he didn't have insurance yeah. on the mower. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's, and it was brand, I mean, I'm talking like one week old and, and it got stolen with no, you know, no compensation. And it's amazing how often that happens. Working in the dealership like I did before I came on board with Kubota, it was, I would say almost a, you know, week to every two weeks, there was instances of, of mowers or, you know, string trimmers. Well, those, the power equipment is a whole nother goes. story. That's, yeah, that's yeah, but, easy to get and go, but, but yeah, but a no, mower. a mower is, yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big chunk of change. And like I said, it's, you know, with this program, you can finance it. So you get 0% financing that can get rolled into your payment. And again, you're covered, you're protected in, in those cases. Well, typically that insurance is, as he's mentioning, when you're rolling into that payment, you know, that $250, you know, at 36 months, it's, you know, $4 or whatever a month for that coverage. And, and it covers everything. I mean, uh, it covers so many different things and perils uh, associated with the equipment that it's it's amazing. I mean, if it's quite a program, and, and usually when someone starts using it, they never stop using it. So how, how does somebody start using the financing and, and that route? Yeah, so you basically, you can come into your dealerships uh, if you want to and go that route. You can fill out a paper or, or go online on Kubota USA. We have a section uh, where you could fill out a credit application and you get pretty good turnaround when it comes to that. They're very quick when it comes to approvals, whatever it may be. If people are out looking at that and they want to go in and know what they either qualify for, you can do that on the online credit apps and, and things like that. So you can come in and get it basically all the way to the end if I'm stating it correctly and then you can go to the dealership and make your final selection and finish the paperwork there at the dealership is is how it works it's 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 a pretty smooth process yep. and and our financing even though you know we're in crazy times right now finance rates are, are going up uh, you know we're still holding on even our 700 series right now we're still offering zero percent for 48 months on that commercial unit so we're still out or in a strong position when it comes to interest rates on on uh, on units so they're doing well with that. Right. Now, the thing I want to ma mention of these programs and, and things like that, the fleet programs, is, like I said, there's varying levels of discounts that are out there available to people, and it's very easy to qualify. And most all of your dealers, if, uh, if you're interested, your dealers will know a lot of information about it. Or there are also uh, things on our website that you can get some cues and find out what the discount levels are of the th machines you're looking at. There is kind of a, a, a varying scale uh, depending upon the unit size. There's a little different discount for several of the machines and things like that. So again, that's going to help put a little bit more of that money back into your customers' pockets. Yeah, if you guys are just starting a lawn care business, and I'm talking you are broke, busted, and disgusted. M money is tough to come by. Would you look at a prosumer machine, commercial, and finance it? Like, what, what would be your strategy if, if it just wasn't big, big amounts of cash in your bank account and you wanted to get things going starting from scratch? Yeah, I think the prosumer route is a great way to go. And then you get in there with that, with that starter fleet for us. You could still get into 0% financing if you qualify. And, and you're, you're ready to go with that low monthly payment. Uh, and then you can also, again, get it, get it covered under K-Tax. So and if you're starting out, you don't have that, that bank of cash sitting there. If something happens, you're still protected. So it's for a person starting out, it's kind of got you covered in a lot of cases. So. Right. And a lot of our dealers, you know, they sell trailers and other things. You know, uh, you know soup to nuts, they can kind of cover the whole you know, one-stop shop it, if you will. That Many of them, most all of them carry a handheld blind if they need handheld products. Bring your truck up, back it up, load up, fleet of one. That's something not everybody has. And uh, we're, we're pretty proud of that. And, you know, we're here to try to help those startup landscapers, mm -hmm. you know, put a little more money in their pocket and, and be successful. You know, and that's that's why we're participating and in, in joining here with you is, is to get that message out. Mm -hmm. Well, Tom, you've been in this industry for a very, very long time. And I'm curious, just your general advice to someone who's, we have so many people, I think when COVID happened and everything that they just started a lawn care business. It's astronomical how many people, and you, you drive around, Matt knows, you drive around Atlanta, you go to a stop sign, you're guaranteed to see a, a setup. Stop. Opener, closed trailer, and, and mower. I mean, they're everywhere. Stop by QT at oh. you know, 7.30 <laughs> a.m. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's why you guys need GPS track it, man, know where your crew's at. But 
Nevertheless, Tom, you've been around this industry for so long. What's your advice to the guys who are just getting started? In my opinion is it really benefits them to find a good dealer and work with a good dealer. That dealer can help them grow. Mm. Uh, I think they're going to put them into the right kinds of products. That dealer, Kubota dealers, that dealer, any dealer that, that's in that area, obviously we suggest that the Kubota dealers, we, do, we try to make sure that they have the best products out there available like Matt mentioned, some of the insurance and some of the other things we have. But getting that and, and developing a relationship with that dealer to me is the most important. I also believe that it makes more sense to stay along the lines of one brand. The mm -hmm. reason I say that is because it helps reduce complexity of the different dealers and different people you need to stop at. I think it can save overall time for, for the customer, for the, for the user. And those are going to be important things, especially as they start to scale their business. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have, instead of having four different machines, if you have four of one machine, A, you're going to get smarter on the one machine than you are on four different machines. Mm -hmm. And you only need one set of parts for the four machines. Just a quick example. And I think those are the examples that make sense to people rather than worrying about a couple dollars on a more this way or that way or the other way. It's It's getting in, knowing, learning about the equipment that you have as you you move through and potentially scale your business. Now, I know there's some guys out there that don't want. They, they want to just be on and off. But then, then the suggestion there is you find the equipment that you believe and sources help you find. Mm -hmm. They're going to reduce the amount of downtime you're going to have. You know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of two things, really, comfort and downtime reduction. That's, I think those are the things that take care of your people and allow you to make a little bit more money because you're not waiting for your unit to get repaired in the shop. I just want to echo what you said earlier. It's it's a mechanical piece of equipment that's used on a daily basis. It's going to need support. It's it's not just a buy it now and forget about it. It's You need that support from your, your dealer, and that's, that's what, I, again, I feel the same way. The dealer is the main driver, in my opinion, of when you're looking for a piece of equipment. Do you guys have any other pieces of practical advice other than, you know, getting a healthy relationship established with your dealer for, for folks in this industry? I, I think another one that I, I like to always uh, speak a little bit about is, is kind of know your lane, mm -hmm. know what you're good at. That's good. You know, try to try to stay in that lane. So example, some people, I think, at times take jobs that are outside their lane, if you will. So what I mean by that is, is if you're mer uh, mowing primarily residential or whatever, certain property sizes and things to make sure you have the right equipment for that, those mm -hmm. properties. If you need a gate machine, if you're going to be in backyards and things like that, make sure you get a gate machine. You know, a lot of people start with gate type machines, uh, you know, 36 inch or, you know, 48 inch type machines and things like that. But then if that's the equipment you have, don't go out and bid, you know, some 10 acre job. Right. Because you're not going to be successful at it. You're going to be trying to put your small piece of equipment on a large, a large property like that. And, and you're, you're going to be dissatisfied with, your income statement as, as it goes on that one and the time consumed at that property. So those are, to me, those are a couple of the big keys. And as you get, as you become an expert in that area and you want to grow and expand your business, then go on to the next one and grow that little bit of the segment of your business. And then you have a quite a portfolio over time. That's a really good piece of advice, Tom. Yeah, and I would say, you know, adding on to that would be educate yourself. We were talking about earlier on the way here, uh, you know, the green industry is a pretty tight-knit community. Your podcast, sharing a lot of information with people, there's a lot of it out there that can really help individuals out when they're first getting started. So I can only imagine what it's like, you you know, whatever it may be, you're starting this and you're just like, where do I begin? And, you know, just educating yourself before you go out there and make those big purchases uh, is, I think, a key point. You got a question, Mr. Producer? I just want to know uh, when I'm going to be able to buy this machine. You know, I, want, I want to hear. I want to hear more about the equipment. Tell me about some of these these great zero turns that I saw today. What well, what models are really hot right now? What do you recommend that people uh, take a serious look at as they're thinking about their plans for for next year? All the models are hot right now, actually, just with <laughs> with inventory shortages and issues like that 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 most everyone's seeing. Our popular models right now are Z400 product family, or Z700, and our ZDs. We kind of dominate the diesel zero turn segment. That segment's great for the large state owners and people that are mowing large acreage properties, uh, big decks, very fuel efficient, very economical to operate, and things like that. A lot of municipalities use those types of pieces of equipment. And then the smaller, more nimble machines on smaller, tighter properties is be that Z400, Z700. So we have what people need. 
They just got to go to their dealer and check it out. And, and again, from the podcast and everything else online and all those things, people can learn a lot. To me, it's next level when you start getting the dealer involved and, and they're really the subject matter experts on the product as well there. And then they have a lot of support behind them. We support our dealers to learn and know, you know, the, the hot things going on right now. And, and Paul, I would just add, uh, so impressed with the way everything was put together. It was just eye-opening to see the quality control at every step uh, there in the, in the whole process. And so uh, I want people to know, made in Georgia. <laughs> yeah, made in our... Qual- quality, quality machinery made here in uh, Mr. Producer's Literally backyard. Literally in our backyard. I was talking to Beth about setting this up. And I was like, you know, I live right here. So thank you guys for coming to our hometown here. Uh, Mr. Producer and I live here, and, and this was very convenient for us, so we appreciate it. But, I mean, you employ 3,000 people in our little town to watch them make the mower from nothing to it going out the door. I mean, it, it was special for the hometown here, you know, in Georgia and the United States. Yeah. Don't want to be the best-kept secret in Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, how can people connect with Kubota and, and learn more about the financing options, the, the fleet options, and, and get rocking and rolling? Yeah, I'd say your first step, again, you check out the website. If you have a relationship with one of our local Kubota dealers, start right there. It's about you know finding that local dealer a choice. Going in and talking to them, and I think that's the best step you can do from the professional landscape uh, avenue. I think that's the way, the way and you it, should go. And if you want that overview of all of the Kubota products, that KubotaUSA.com, that website is uh, is very powerful. Yep. It's up to date. Yeah. And Tom, I want to reiterate something Tom said, because I do a lot of one-on-one coaching calls and guys see on Instagram all these setups and they think they need the 36 and the 52 and the 60 and then you just get everything you can to look cool. But you made a really good point is know who your customer is and get the equipment for that customer and then just you're going to have to say no to whoever has the other there's so much work out there but you have to know what to say yes to and what to say no to and i thought that was really good because personally tom when i was building my business i said yes to everything until like you said i was looking at the profit and loss statement saying this this ain't working out until you choose this is my lane yeah. one of the things long ago in my career as you said i've been in it forever not really forever but a long time <laughs> uh, is is i I met with a, a guy in the Dallas area, actually from Dallas. I, I don't know where that guy ever got to. But anyway, he had a thing, and you know, it was for profitability. He knew where all of his trucks would go. So he, he, had, he had about six trucks that would roll around. They did primarily residential. So he knew he had the routes known, and this was 20 years ago he knew this. And he mm-hmm. goes, if those trucks have more than about 32 miles a day on, somebody's not doing what they're supposed to be wow. doing. And that was, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. And then his product, this and that, and, and, and this again, twenty plus years ago, he everything was everything was credit card based. He he never went to the property. His his basically his statement was, I don't ever want to call from somebody. You don't ever want to have to go back and do something. Mm-hmm. So he he trained his people and got his people on board to say, this is how the, this is the job you're expected to do, and he, he was very successful at it. And it, and it was eye opening to me. And he was a fairly young guy. You know, he had enough capital and, and this and that to, to get the, the number of trucks and have the crews and things like that. And it was just kind of eye-opening to me. Even back then, 20-something years ago, he knew if that truck was outside the lines, if he would talk to that guy, say, hey, you really shouldn't have put more than 32 miles on today. And you were at 40. What? Where Where did you go? Quick trip. <laughs> well, <laughs> hard to say. But but uh, anyway, he had, he had fallback and follow-up yeah. plans and things like that. So it was very interesting. And that's a, a recommendation that I would say with, with many of the other people. And the other thing is, is, is stacking. You know, when you're finding your customers and things like that, you want to try to eliminate your transit time. Mm-hmm. That's, that's just another recommendation. If, you know, if you can get, you know, ideally. Route density. Yeah, route density. And then, you know, if your dealer's in the center of that route, that works doubly well. When you're starting out, plan that. Where's your dealer at? Where, where's the big money at the neighborhood you want to work in? And get that all mapped out that it's together. Yeah. You have no choice if you're in the Atlanta market. You you, you have to yeah. be you're in a certain... selling your service versus just having waiting for people yeah. to call from different areas. Yeah, you're selling your service in one area and, and growing from there. And, right. and, and that's another cue, too. Again, another guy many, many years ago said in the Houston area, he same way. And he wanted to do more on one street. So, you mm-hmm. know, they pull in. There on that street, you know, his average time on property was about 13 minutes. That was the average time for the crew, total crew to be there. Well, rather than move off in 13 minutes, he'd rather do eight more houses 
13, 13, 13, you know, all those mm -hmm. and pretty effective. You made some money. Great. So. Well, thank you guys for the tips and thank you for your time. And again, thank you for uh, showing us Kubota today. I know Mr. Producer and I really appreciate the generosity. Well, you're, you're very welcome. Thanks again for having us on. Appreciate thank it. Thank you guys.